In an open letter to librarians, former President Barack Obama spoke out against the, quote, profoundly misguided book bans in school libraries. So the former president uh, wrote an open letter to American librarians, uh, and he appears in a TikTok video decrying right-wing censorship push. Now, I've mentioned this before, all of the rhetoric you're hearing about right-wing censorship in book bans is basically the left complaining about the fact that conservative parents have said that pornographic material cannot and should should not be shown to children in public schools. And by the way, even the the articles that claim to be sympathetic to this position that these are book bans acknowledge that this is a movement which is being led by parents. Parents right. are the ones saying, "Do not show this content to my children." It is not right-wing special interest groups saying, "If you show this book to children, it will expand their minds and it will it will reduce our control over the hegemonic narrative." It is literally parents saying, "Don't show porn to our children." in right. the books that they are defending are pornographic and have pornographic content in them. So uh, in the letter, Barack Obama called it uh, profoundly misguided. He said that books, including controversial books, shaped his life. Barack, I hope these kinds of books are not the ones that shaped your life. He said it's no coincidence that these banned books are often written by or feature people of color, indigenous people, and members of the LGBTQ community. Interesting. Is he alleging that there are books being banned because there are indigenous or black people in them? It's the most ridiculous thing I've that heard in my life. That's he's exactly referring, what he's alleging. That's what he's, he's alleging, but this this part here is operative, right? This is the key, the LGBTQ plus community. I agree, Brock. It is kind of a weird coincidence that all of the books that are being banned because they have pornographic content in them are being supported by the LGBT community and your party. Maybe don't own that so loudly. What do you guys think I think one thing that's interesting is a lot of these books and I've spoken to moms for liberty about this um, and about the different books and different moms who are like you know we don't want gender queer we don't want flamer we don't want a lot of these books a lot of them are actually graphic novels and I wonder if it would be uh, if anyone would even notice if they were not graphic novels because that's where you see this you see you know uh, lesbians filleting a strap on and gender queer mm -hmm. um and that's certainly not something that you would want in schools and i think a lot of what is being missed is that it's not that um people are asking for books to be banned they're asking for age appropriate material to be made available to students you know gender queer has no business being taught nope when I, I bought this book myself, we have it here on the table, I bought this book myself to check it out and to say to see what it was really about. And even worse than some of the images, what I thought was the most shocking was that the main character who had been raised in a very weird situation um, grows up to decide to be non-binary and the book ends right as she is deciding to come out to mm. a middle school class. And I'm thinking that's even more insidious. Why do people feel the need to, uh, why do teachers feel the need to express their personal sexual preferences, orientations, and, you know, gender expression to their students? I find that so bizarre. Yeah. You know, I don't remember, uh, I remember some of my teachers were married, but I don't remember anything about them. No. I had one fourth grade teacher who brought us all over to her house, Mrs. Fife. And I remember even thinking at the time, like, this is weird. Why are we at Mrs. Fife's house? Yeah. yeah. Like, this is very bizarre. I, I want to return to the time where, like, when you saw your teacher in the grocery store, you were like, you exist outside school? Yeah, exactly. Like, right. What is happening here? Well. And it's not because they're not human and have their own lives and can do whatever. It's just because that's the setting in which children know them. Like, I want them to feel like there is a, a, a certain relationship in school, and I don't like the idea that you would blur the lines for your own emotional gratification, right? The other yeah. thing, too, is... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to yeah. say, like, the Pope had this interesting comment on... Uh, people having dogs and I'm going to misquote it and I know there are Catholics instead of in children yeah, yeah he was Francis saying like the this. reason this is one of his you, base quotes one of the reasons you like uh, people have dogs is because there's less emotional work in this relationship uh, than having children and I yes. think there is something similar that's happening here where it's like I specifically want children to be like wow we love you anyway whoever you are because ch children are innocent and when you feel like you have gotten gratification from them you know, it, it, there is some sort of secure, trapped audience effect well, there, again, and I, I think that should be. Well, also, we these are encourage. teachers who never properly grew up. You know, mm -hmm. they're they that's are a huge part of it. Are these the role models you want your kids to have? Well, yeah, yeah I mean, look, childlike when, state. When I was a kid, which wasn't that long ago, but when I was a kid, you didn't even know your teacher's first name. The idea that your teacher is telling you about all the perverse sexual things they're doing behind the scenes.
vaccines is totally insane, but we know why it's happening, right? This is grooming. They want children to be exposed to their perverse lifestyle choices because grooming is essentially a kind of perverse exposure therapy. People intuitively recoil at perversion and degeneracy. And so if you keep putting it in front of the child, the idea is you will slowly chip away at their intuitive sense that this right. is wrong. That's a huge deal too. Like when you take a kid to drag story hour, right? Like mm -hmm. if you do that, there are kids you can see in videos of this who recoil and the moms yep. are like, and it's always moms. The moms they gaslight like, them. No, they honey, gaslight them ahead. into thinking That's it's totally good. That's totally fine. That's yep. totally fine. Or the Washington Post article by a mom who was saying that she was taking her kid to the Pride Parade and wanted the kid to see kink and to normalize kink. And or the sex ed classes that emphasize pleasure in second grade it's and disgusting. start teaching kids there's about no masturbation. There's no reason for a but sex ed an, class in second no. grade, period. But there's, there's something more to this too, which I also find a little disturbing, which is... Uh, and I'm just sort of expressing this for the first time. So if I screw it up, you know, I'll, you'll refine it later. I'll refine sure, it later. Yet. But the idea is that um, if you're a kid, why do you want all of this stuff to come from authority figures? You know, why do you, why are authority figures getting involved in what essentially should be a kid's private emotional life? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I had this professor in college, uh, Danny Kaiser, um, and we were studying James Joyce and Marcel Proust in his class. And the first day of class, he said, I don't know why you guys want me to teach you Joyce. When I was your age, Joyce was mine. I didn't mm. want anyone to teach it to me. It was for me. I wanted to learn about it myself. And he said the same thing about folk music. He was way older than us, obviously. Um, but I think to a certain extent, like, when I wanted to read weird books when I was in high school, which, you know, like I was a weird, curious kid. I read a lot of weird books. I went and found them for myself. I didn't want anyone to teach me anything. I didn't want anyone to teach me poetry. I didn't really want people to teach me Kafka. I wanted to read those things myself. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? And so you have these people who are not just infiltrating the educational system and infiltrating that, but they're infiltrating the private thoughts of these kids who should be, if they're going to be thinking about these things, that should be their own private thoughts mm -hmm. to a certain extent. It shouldn't be involved with adults. Or no. with their parents or, at the very Or their, you know, talk to your parents for sure. But like well, the infiltration of adults into children's private lives is really messed well, up. Well, this is something I also want to mention that came from one of the articles I was reading about this. The ALA has found that in U.S. public schools last year, a record 2,571 unique titles were targeted for censorship, often led by parent groups. Oh, no. A 38% increase from the eight, uh, 1,800 unique titles targeted for censorship in 2021. Now, they're saying that as if that's an indication that our laws are becoming more draconian. We're trying to prevent kids from seeing this literature. Firstly... This is happening. This kind of pornographic content is being placed into public schools and public school libraries at a much higher rate than it was in the past. So it makes yeah, sense that you'd be seeing sure. more people trying to remove them. I think parents are also finally starting to wake up to this stuff, being in the libraries at their kids' schools or being taught in their classrooms. So it makes sense that they'd stand up and say something. But again, the article here acknowledges that this is led by parent groups who are saying, stop showing this stuff to our children. And also... This idea that there's such a thing as being too selective about what you're allowing your child to be exposed to when they're off at a school where you have no oversight over them through the course of the day other than the standards that you've gotten the school to agree to is total insanity. It is a good thing that parents are becoming more concerned with what their kids are looking at in schools. The fact that you try to frame that is something that I see these numbers and I go, good, more parents are involved, more parents care about what their kids are reading. In their ideal world, the parents sit back and say, show whatever you want to my kids. I don't care. Now, I happen to disagree with that, which is why I think the fact that 2,500 different titles are being pulled out of public schools and they're being told you can't show these to our children is good because if parents don't want their kids seeing that stuff, then the kids shouldn't be looking at it. Well, here's the other thing, though. A lot of times it's really hard to get the curriculum. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Mm -hmm. No. I have tried to, at, you know, at the schools my son has gone to, not the Lutheran school that he went to for a while. That was very easy. But so much of the curriculum is not on in books. They don't send home textbooks. If the kids do worksheets, the worksheets stay at school. That's a huge thing. So COVID really opened people's minds to this. That's where I started to really see what was mm. going on at the school in terms of like weird racial education and whatever else. Um, so that is, I think, one of the biggest 
uh, upsides of the pandemic. That's where Moms for Liberty came in. They were like, vaccine mandates, no. Masking, no. Wait, and all these books, all of this yeah. stuff that you guys are looking at, all of this curriculum, no. That's a good and point. And there was even a situation where, I think it was in Chico, California. It was it the Chico School District. Anyway, it's been on my list. I haven't been able to write about it. I wanted to for a couple of days. Anyway, a parent was, a mom was denied the ability to look at the curriculum of the school was told outright that she couldn't see it. And a lot of school districts, what they do is they say that the material is copyrighted, so they can't send it home. Mm. And they keep the stuff from the parents. Disgusting. So the Any more excuse. they keep the stuff from the parents, the more angry parents are going to get. I, know I was at Moms for Liberty, the summit in Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago. And when I was talking to the moms about what was going on, they were really insistent. You know, that they wanted to see what was going on in the schools and they wanted to be a part of it. I will just say, though, mm -hmm. did you guys see what Barack Obama's half brother said about the list that Malik? he put out? No. Yeah. That, no. He deleted the tweet, but he said, this man is definitely gay. Oh, my About goodness. Barack? Yeah. Dude, Barack. He him a lot. You got to eat more green vegetables, man. Your hair's too white. I love you, brother. <laughs> You're Ian's like a, a dietary expert. Yeah. Ian's a dietary expert uh, yeah. ever since he started bulking up for this music Long video. Life, but I'm not against it. I'm yeah. not against it. I, all of your comments just make me return to the refrain, only groomers ask you to keep things from your parents. Like your exactly. Kid. Like, exactly. It is weird to me that their position would be, well, don't talk. We can't show you. Like, There shouldn't be secrets between parents and children. Obviously, over time, children mm -hmm. develop independence and things like that. But like... The school should be able to be like, no, you're not allowed. It's just for me and our, your kids to look at. Right. Well, and that, well, is not, what, that is what they do. It's and crazy. not only like, you do really groomers. Can't get it. You really cannot get this material. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.